Okay, hello and welcome to my video series on cross site request forgery. In part 1 I want to give you a quick overview. First of all I'd like to clear up some very common misconceptions. The first one is that cross site request forgery or CSRF is the same as cross site scripting or access as. Now while both attacks do share a part of their name they are rather different. With access as the attacker inserts a piece of text, for example the following JavaScript code, onto a website by sending the victim a specially prepared link. With CSRF, however, the victim sends the attacker's request to the web server without knowing about it. I will go into detail on this in a minute. A second and also very common misconception is that preventing XSS means stopping CSRF. In reality, XSS isn't required for a CSRF attack to work, but in many cases it makes it a lot easier. More on this also in a later section of this video series. As a quick side note, other names for cross site request forgery include the abbreviation CSRF, which I guess is pronounced CSRF, AccessRF, and Session Writing. I don't like to use CSRF though, because every time I see that phrase I think of surfing at sea. Seriously, every time. <laughs> this is why I'm not going to use that term and just stick to CSRF. Okay, let's get to the good stuff. How can you use CSRF to attack a website? Simple. Say your your website. No, say the victim is logged into the website www.example.com and you simply want to lock him out. You accomplish this by luring him to a web page of yours where you have an image tag whose source is example.com slash logout.php. This causes the victim's browser to automatically request logout.php which will immediately lock him out. The point of height and width equals 1 is simply so that the victim won't notice that there is an image on your web page that didn't load. Okay, I, I suck at public speaking, so I guess that's why I'm really stiff or something. Oh well. Okay, unless the victim looks at the source code, he won't, no he won't notice a thing unless he's back on example.com and sees that he's logged out. Granted, this is a rather pointless attack, but it does explain the logic behind CSRF. You can apply this concept to other site functions, like deleting a user, transferring money out of your victim's bank account, and more. A different way of utilizing CSRF would be to use an iframe with the same source as the image above, or the use of an automatic, of an automatic redirect, for example a, met a meta refresh to get the victim's browser to request logout.php. The meta refresh method isn't very covert because the victim will immediately see that something's fishy, so you might not want to use this approach if you don't want your victim to know what you have done. I just mentioned this approach for the sake of completeness. The problem with CSRF is that absolutely everything that a website allows a customer or a user to do can be abused unless this action is specifically protected against CSRF. The only requirement is that the user has to be logged into the website. That is it. I guess the key to understanding CSRF is that web applications don't verify that a given user is performing a request. To be honest, I don't even know how that would work in the first place. Maybe you'd have to, I don't know, place a video camera next to your computer that films you and the screen at the same time and shows that it is in fact you who is performing this action. Well, or something. What web applications are doing is verifying that a given browser is performing said request. This works because whenever your browser requests a page on a given domain, it automatically sends along all cookies associated with that domain. Okay, that concludes part one of my video series on cross site request forgery. If you have any questions at all um, regarding this course, please don't hesitate to write me at arne.aachenmethod.com. I'm just a regular guy who loves to get email and I always try to respond to everyone within 24 hours. Okay, next up, next up is part two where I talk about how websites of some huge companies like ING or Google have been vulnerable in the past.